Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrea Gino Crivelli. I'm the coordinator and the speaker in this session. We speak about the mobility of a researcher, this pro the problem connected with the mobility, and the project of a Euro pan-European uh, supplementary pension plan named Receiver that tried to solve this kind of problem. Uh, we speak about mobility because the value of mobility is uh, uh, for researchers is frequently emphasized as a driver of excellence and a cornerstone in creating an European research area. Some studies say that, uh, on average, the research impact of scientists who change affiliation across national boundaries is nearly 20% higher than of those that who never move abroad. However, researchers face many difficulties, especially in preserving, in preserving their supplementary pension benefits when moving between countries. And this leads to inadequate pensions, decreased competitiveness, and the fragmentation of the European market for researchers. The receiver. <coughs> The receiver, uh, in this, uh, this workshop, we will analyze the nature of receiver and how he solves these difficulties because it's the pension that travels with the researcher wherever they go. For the re this reason, the receiver, is, the receiver is one of uh, European research area priority for an open labor market for researchers. Today, today we discuss uh, about uh, receiver on these experts who will give a different point of view on the matter. The first research, uh, speaker will be uh, Andrea Berigni, that is a CEO of uh, ECA Italia, it is a, a leader company in consulting in mobility of HR. Unfortunately, Slaven uh, Vladis. Uh, Zagorski is, can uh, participate today for health reason, but his uh, speech will be done by uh, Slaven. The, there is uh, the, the Slaven is a policy officer in the direct, director of uh, general in the director general for research and innovation of the European Commission. Slaven is responsible for various files related in. Uh, European research area in fi financial instrument and researcher careers. After this speech, I, I introduce the, 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 the matter of receiver. And uh, uh, the last uh, uh, speaker will be Giuseppe Montalbano. There is uh, a tre treasurer and the pension officer at Eurodoc. He's a PhD in political sciences and the lecturer at Luis Guido Carli in international relations. Uh, the Dottoressa Laura Angeletti, uh, we coordinated the, the, the uh, question and answer uh, session. So I think that uh, we can begin in uh, the, the, the speech with uh, the Andrea Benigni in. Uh, intervention that will be about a, an overview on the problem on the mobility of uh, a, uh, human resources in, in Europe and uh, for uh, the uh, pension uh, scheme in, in, uh, in particular. My poor Andrea. Non si sente. It's okay? Yeah. No, sorry. Okay. sorry. Uh, good afternoon to everybody. Thank you, Andrea, for the introduction. And uh, just a quick uh, presentation of the company that I represent and the matter that we usually face daily 
with so many international companies. Uh, my name is Andrea Benigni, I'm Managing Director at TCA Italia. Uh, our first interesting uh, information is the meaning of ECA because of ECA mean employment conditions abroad. So we are in the concept that uh, drives this session. So employment conditions abroad, what uh, could be the better way and effective way to manage people that spend a short, long, uh, or middle term uh, of his uh, professional experience abroad. And uh, you know that uh, is matter, uh, this matter is very, very complex, hard to manage. And uh, one of the first benchmark I want to switch to you uh, is that often uh, the market represent uh, a not very high skill inside the company to drive the situation because you have to manage more and more uh, matter. Uh, Italian, for example, taxation, but also French, Belgium, German, taxation, and you have to cross the situation each other, uh, and you have to manage each other. Uh, but we have also a melting pot to manage uh, with reference to the uh, many nationalities that the international company uh, have to organize uh, daily, monthly, yearly, uh, by a very, very strong uh, pressing uh, from the business in this sense. So, uh, the quick presentation that I will forward uh, and share with you uh, will be focused on the main matter related to the social security uh, crisis that uh, international manager, technicians, specialists, researchers uh, could met uh, during their uh, career. Particularly, I have used uh, the, the name, uh, the, the way of saying uh, of global nomads that uh, is a, a very, very often uh, way to, to explain uh, in, uh, inside the company uh, the profile of people uh, that will spend abroad more and more years, possibly in more and more countries. So, uh, our first uh, First comment could be about uh, the main international uh, best practice you can meet uh, in the management practice that face daily uh, the matter of global mobility. Uh, normally, you will find the three ways to assign people abroad, short-term assignment, long-term assignment, permanent assignment, or better localization. That it means uh, that uh, you uh, will be directly in relationship with the uh, foreign employer that we lost you during the period you will spend abroad. And it is a first difference to take into consideration and point out, because of if you move people by short term or long term, it means that you maintain a relationship with a certain entity based in a certain country. For example, we are in Italy, an Italian researcher that is employed by an Italian uh, research center and he will be, she will be assigned to a German, Belgium, uh, Dutch uh, research center. So you maintain a relationship with your country and you will span a period abroad specified in one of your country. Uh, I remind you uh, a little, a few seconds ago. Permanent or localization, it means another thing and possibly uh, is uh, the picture, the scenario, that uh, the context uh, which characterizes your specific activity uh, meet uh, frequently. Because I know that uh, often uh, the researcher uh, is engaged directly by the research center uh, based in that country where the needs uh, is open and uh, uh, that specific researcher will be assigned there. Uh, and it means uh, an open issue as per uh, the social security matter, because it means that you will pay social security in every country where you work. Absolutely, in the first two situations that I detailed before, short term and long term, you maintain a relationship with your country. So uh, you could meet a new situation, a new scenario. What? Uh, the scenario that uh, provide for a fragmentation, a segmentation of your career with reference to the 
employer uh, that will be in contact uh, with you. Uh, so who the global nomads uh, are? Uh, I, I have the table three main situations. An international manager, international technician, specialist, if we speak about traditional company, or research uh, researcher, if we speak about uh, your specific uh, context. I want to underline also an open mind person. I think that if you aren't an open mind person today, you weren't here. <laughs> and it's very important to underline this aspect during this historical period in our country particularly, because of uh, the melting pot to manage, the, the, the diversity to manage uh, has become one of the main drivers that the company uh, are following today uh, and are uh, mm, pushing today uh, in a way to become more effective and also more att attractive. And I think so that it's one of the characteristic uh, really nearest to your scenario uh, again. But also an international, it's, uh, the, the global nomad is an international manager, an international technician or researcher who works across the world. So uh, he, she uh, will have a career segmentation and particularly a possible crisis to manage uh, as per uh, his uh, social security plan uh, over the years. Why? because uh, we will have a possible segmentation of social security across the multiple country I will, uh, I will be assigned uh, where I will spend my professional experience. Uh, and absolutely, uh, it will uh, be a, a consequence uh, about the contract applied, uh, but also uh, about the many uh, payment of social security that you will realize country by country. Uh, I want to underline this aspect because uh, when you are younger, when you are 30, 35, 40, uh, normally uh, this matter isn't in your mind. You don't think that this will be a matter that you will uh, face during the year because you are focused, fully focused on your business on your concept, on, uh, on your specialization, and it's correct, <laughs> I want to, to underline this sense. But uh, when you will be 46, 48, 50, 52, this matter will become uh, a new issue that you will have to take into consideration. And if you haven't managed in a correct and effective way this aspect over your career, uh, you could meet not uh, little problems, we can say, uh, at 60 or 62 or 63. And uh, it's very important that both the researcher, both the specialist, the professional, and the organization take in their mind that this is a very hard problem to matter uh, because social security and services that people need uh, over the year, particularly in a, a second part uh, of, uh, of, of the life, uh, will be important to take into consideration. Sometimes company too, not only the public research center uh, that have to manage very hard budget, I know, uh, but also company with very important budget, with very large budget, sometimes don't take in the uh, right consideration this kind of, of uh, crisis. I want to underline and point out my attention and your attention around the localization, because I know that uh, is localiz localization the first uh, and the most important driver that uh, the research center particularly uh, use and push because of you are uh, independent organization, okay? Normally, an international group uh, has more than one company all over the world, and every company get in touch each other and have relationships with each other. It means that an employee based in uh, France could be assigned to Italy, but the group is the same group, okay? Uh, obviously, now we are speaking about another situation, because the research center are public company, and normally they aren't linked each other 
um, when we are speaking about uh, a reserve center based in Trieste uh, and another uh, center based in Lyon or Geneva. Obviously, if you move people uh, from one center to another center, from one organization to another organization, we aren't speaking about an international group, but international independent organization that are in partnership. It's another matter, okay? But the people is ever the people. It's ever the manager, ever the professional that we are moving from uh, one base to another base. So we have to understand what these people could meet during his career. Okay, today I am uh, employee in Trieste. Tomorrow I will be employee in Geneva. Okay, what does it mean? It means that today I will pay contribution, social, con social security contribution in Italy while I am employee in Italy. And tomorrow where I will be engaged in Geneva, I will pay Swiss social security. Okay, what does it mean? Because I, I will pay two social security, uh, uh, under two social security system, different social security system, okay? Uh, and it means that every country will recognize to me the period I have paid there. The question is, uh, the two countries uh, are uh, agree, uh, ha have signed a social security agreement that permit to the employee involved to put in sum uh, the period I have spent in Italy and in Switzerland, but tomorrow I, I could consider France, I could consider Germany, Belgium, generally speaking, all the European Union, mm? okay? The reply is yes, because we have a, an international principle that is uh, the totalization way, totalization system, that permit to have recognized every period spent in one country, in another country, if the two countries have signed a social security agreement. At the same time, if this is surely a protection way that permits you to have this kind of granting, we have to point out and underline another matter, that this fragmentation opens a very complex issue, because at the end of my career, I will have to put together all this period and uh, go to every social security body and request a pro rata uh, of a retirement fee, mm? okay? And you could understand that uh, it will be a way to follow, absolutely, because it's in the interest of the people involved. But at the same time, we have to manage a very, very hard matter, particularly if we refer to a specialist, a professional that hasn't the skill to get in touch and to relation him, herself, to a social security body in Italy, Austria, France, Belgium, and so on and so forth. So one uh, of the way that could open uh, a solution is a private solution. Every people uh, think to himself, to herself, and open by its own uh, approach uh, a private pension scheme, for example. But I think, and I can confirm to you also for the market, that international company normally uh, open their mind towards a solution to offer to their, to their employees, to their manager, in your case, possibly uh, to, to the research uh, involved. Because you will have to manage this kind of problem, multiple contracts over the years, multiple social security over the years, multiple country over the years, and totalization where applicable. Because, uh, for example, if we are speaking about uh, of a, a European researcher, that is engaged in Italy, France, Belgium, Germany, and the next project will be in Russia, for example, or in China. Okay, fantastic. It's a uh, uh, fantastic experience, but China and Russia haven't, hasn't uh, social security agreement with Italy, with France, with Belgium, generally speaking, with the European country. And in this particular situation, you could have a real crisis because that period could be not covered uh, as per uh, the social security, the social security uh, position. So totalization, okay, a good solution, but if the uh, uh, social security agreement is present between the two countries where I have spent a part of my career. So these are uh, the problem 
that you have to manage and you have to take into consideration. And you could uh, forward a question to me now. And uh, are there uh, other solutions to, to, to submit to, to the people and to the, to the general uh, manager, to, to the management of the organization that have to, to, to face and, uh, mm, and check this kind uh, of situation? Uh, a solution uh, could be a, a business model that the international uh, company have developed over the years. Uh, and I know more, more and more companies that know uh, this kind of business model that is named uh, uh, GEC, Global Employment Company. Uh, it's often you find an international company that say, okay, uh, I, uh, I am an Italian multinational, I am a French multinational, but today my international workforce, it's not only uh, composed by Italian manager and technician assigned abroad. I have Italian, I have French manager, I have German manager, Spanish, US, Brazilian, and so on and so forth. What could be a solution that permit me to harmonize all these kind of management services and all uh, the, the, the management activity I have to implement uh, to support this kind of international workforce? GEC could be a solution because I could organize uh, a company based in a third country and in Europe uh, you find this kind of phenomena particularly in Ireland, in the UK, in Belgium and in Netherlands and also in Luxembourg and uh, it becomes a sort of shared service center uh, that is able to engage people and send suddenly abroad the same people involved inside the project uh, whereas the company needs that specific, that specific, uh, specific skills and uh, ability. Uh, obviously, we are speaking about international company, multinational, uh, engaged, uh, for example, in the finance sector, uh, oil and gas, energy, and so on. Uh, if we want to move this kind of business model on a uh, picture in line with your experience, obviously, we are speaking about uh, a, a different scenario because I repeat what I said to you before. Uh, you aren't uh, an international group. You are independent uh, organization, country by country, that move uh, inside uh, a, an international partnership the people from one center to another center. Mm? Okay? So, uh, obviously, uh, to apply this kind of approach in a, in a context, in a picture, in line with your experience, we could think to create a new body that could be able uh, to share the services to all the center involved. Obviously, it's not easy, but it could be a way. Why? Because this could be a, a little image that could represent uh, the, the business model I'm describing. No? So different people come from Brazil, France, Germany, uh, they will be managed by a, a central HR payroll and accounting hub, and then I will send the same people to other countries, US, China, uh, Russia, Italy, and so on and so forth, okay? Uh, generally speaking, under the mandatory social security payment you have to grant to the people, the situation isn't different from the previous uh, case study I have quickly explained, because of you will have to pay at any time social security contribution in the country where you perform. So in the US, China, Russia, or in Italy, or in another country, uh, you will be assigned. But it could be a very um, effective solution, the idea to move a sort of compensation plan that could, uh, um, could forecast the presence of an international pension plan that harmonizes all the position of the people involved. So you will be sent from the GEC to China, to Italy, to Poland, to Spain, but uh, you don't pay only the social security uh, payments due locally uh, because of uh, the GEC will pay for you also an international pension plan that could be also, we can say each other, uh, a sort of uh, retention uh, way to render more solid the presence of the professional, the manager, the specialist inside 
the, the research project, uh, whereas you will be uh, involved. I understand that the scheme is not easy to implement in a context, in a concept uh, of, of, of scenario uh, like the arts. But at the same time, uh, it's surely one of the ways that could protect better the people involved. Because on the other hand, uh, the only one solution is uh, what I have explained in the first two, three, four slides, uh, and the totalization, uh, when applicable, uh, is the only one, the only one uh, solution. Absolutely, this matter is very hard. It's not uh, easy uh, to manage. I understand that organization could have to plan cost uh, of organization uh, to, to render able and feasible this kind of approach, but uh, it's important to understand that uh, uh, global mobility is not uh, an easy way to manage people. Normally, global mobility is linked to very important projects. I don't move uh, a, a low skill. I move high skill. I move high talent. I move top management when, I speak, uh, when I'm speaking about a company. And so you have to understand that uh, uh, aligning uh, to this uh, kind of movement, to kind of uh, mobility, uh, you have to, to put and grant a very strong way to manage in an effective and compliant way uh, the people involved. So uh, this is my final slide. And uh, in this sense, I want to uh, thank you, the organizer, to, 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 for the chance uh, granted to me for this speech. And uh, I hope uh, that uh, I have been effective. Uh, I have uh, not many times as the other, like the other speakers, so I want to leave them uh, the, right, the right time to explain their, their presentation and their speech too. Uh, thanks, uh, Andrea, for uh, your very, very interesting uh, speech. Uh, I, your speech uh, has provocated a lot, a lot of questions in, in me, but now I, I prefer uh, pose to you only one. Uh, afterwards, uh, we can uh, uh, discuss at the end of, uh, of the discussion if we will have time. But uh, it's very, very interesting uh, that uh, your uh, part uh, about uh, the global employment uh, company. Because if you, I think you know that uh, uh, the European Research Infrastructure Consortium, e e ERICS, operated since, since, uh, since some years, uh, and there are consortia of European law. There is a not uh, subjected in, uh, in uh, single uh, country law, but is, uh, decided by, uh, by, by the European Union. And uh, uh, there are set up of the initiative of uh, scientific communities by a group of countries, and uh, they operating uh, in the most di di diverse, uh, diverse field of science, but all are characterized by the great mobility of the, well, uh, the human research, with all the, uh, the problems that you have uh, exposed. Do you think that for this kind of uh, organization, uh, it's possible to imagine uh, something or similar of a glo global employment company uh, made the, the adjustment because there are uh, complete, uh, completely different in, uh, in the scope, but they uh, have the same problem from the La Tussenso uh, administrative uh, point of view. It's a reproducible for Eris and uh, connected to the problem that we'll discuss about uh, uh, receiver and it. They think it is useful for they have an international pension plan. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, uh, with reference to a, a main uh, ideal scenario, surely GEC could be a very effective solution. At the same time, I'm perfectly conscious that uh, being the reserve center uh, independent organization, they could uh, align each other uh, inside a, a main project that could be involved all of the organization. So it means that <clears throat> you will have to organize a sort of uh, shared service center 
uh, with the participation of every center involved, obviously, every research center involved. <clears throat> and then uh, that new co, we can say, could be uh, the new body that provide international services uh, where every uh, professional, every researcher come from a different country could be engaged and send abroad suddenly. So uh, it's not easy, but uh, it could be a very effective solution because on the other hand, I think in the experience I have collected in Italy, because you know, Andrea, we have had experience in uh, Synchrotrone, but we, we have relationships with the Instituto Italiano uh, di Tecnologia, with Human Technopol in, Gen in Genoa, uh, Human Technopol in Milan, and we know very well your, your experience and uh, the way uh, very hard uh, you have to face daily uh, when you manage, manage international, international consultant, international professional. And uh, the social security matter is one of the main criticism uh, we have to, uh, to manage. Today, for example, in Italy, uh, we have a very fantastic news when we speak about uh, international researcher, because you know very well that uh, if you spend in Italy more than two years, you will have a fantastic tax discount uh, up to 90 percent. Mm? Okay, and it's a very good news, obviously, for the international researcher. But at the same time, uh, this is an experience in Italy, at least for a little period. Uh, during the same period, you are paying social security in Italy, okay? But after this experience, you will be moved in Austria or in Czech Republic. So you will have to manage over the years this month. And uh, I think that the only way is harmonization. The totalization system is a, a little protection because it's a public uh, harmonization. Uh, the harmonization I'm speaking about could be a, a real instrument put at the disposal of the people involved and you have a very continual situation that grant to you uh, a, a coverage uh, by, in this way, uh, an international pension plan. Uh, so uh, I think that you have to, to, to push and push towards this direction and also dedicate time and budget to, to, to organize a body that it's not easy to manage because after you need professionalism and skill, ability in uh, tax and social security planning and also compensation plan because also the compensation plan would become a way to be harmonized, like an international group in this sense. Okay. Thank very much. We can uh, uh, give the, now speak, uh, uh, the, uh, introduce the speaker the speech of uh, Slaven Mislencevic that uh, uh, speak about the position of European Commission on uh, receiver and on uh, the uh, problems connected to the pension plans. Slaven, thank you. Thank you, Andrea, very much for this, and also Andrea uh, Benini for a very interesting presentation. Um, a lot of things that have been already shared by uh, Benini, I will try not to repeat my um, in my part of, of, of this session. Um, I think what, what is the question I'm also getting frequently asked, and I think it's really important for the audience to understand is, why is actually Director General for Research and Innovation involved in a pan-European occupation fund? Uh, usually, it, uh, these type of matters are being handled by my colleagues uh, uh, from Digital Employment. Unfortunately, like you mentioned, Andrea, Valdis could not make it today to, uh, because, of the medical, uh, because of the medical reasons. Nevertheless, I think it's also important to see what the perspective is of the DG research and innovation on, on this issue. Um, one of the things DG RNI is, has been like, over the last decades uh, uh, very involved in was really facilitating collaboration, international cooperation. Um, we know that the, the, the societal challenges of, of today and the ones of tomorrow can only uh, be solved by bringing uh, the institutions together, uh, by working closely together, by taking all the barriers that might, that might uh, make this cooperation uh, more difficult, by bringing the, the best people together. Um, and this is what I also think has been quite successful from our side. Uh, this, is, this has also been 
um, let's say, vested in the European research area where we, we continuously see, seeing, uh, uh, continuously observe that the mobility of researcher is a key driver for scientific um, excellence. On the other hand, we have also been becoming more and more aware about the negative impact of, 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 of let's say, the mobility, because we are really promoting mobility, but let's also, there's also a certain negative impact of the, of the mobility. Um, certain reports have been uh, published in the past, like, 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 like the uh, Gago Bilgan report back in 2009. Uh, there was also a communication, uh, European Commission communication on the better careers and more mobility. Uh, the green paper towards uh, adequate, sustainable, and safe European systems. All of these uh, documents highlighted that when somebody is mobile inside the, inside the European Union, that at retirement age they might find themselves in a rather difficult situation. Um, it's not always the case. Well, this definitely, um, this definitely a, a took a uh, grasp to our attention because on one hand we are really promoting uh, mobility and on the other hand we are really seeing that one of our uh, strategic type of workers, which are researchers, are among the most mobile category of workers in the, in the whole European Union. And let's say this and th then these are just the issues that are related to the mobility. There are still um, other issues, much more general issues, uh, which are coupled with the change in the pensions landscape. Um, this should not be really a news, but we, in most member states, we observe that the state pensions are under under continuous uh, are under continuous uh, pressure. Um, in most countries, this won't change in, in let's say in the near term. And so, what we are seeing in many countries is really this shift from the first pillar, let's say the state pensions, to the growing importance of the occupational pension and the private pension. So in this situation where, let's say, the importance of, 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 of occupational and personal pensions is increasing, and we add to that the additional issues that mobile employees are facing um, made us really realize that something needs to be done in, 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 in this area. So the European Commission quite some time ago started in investigating what, what might be the, the, the right approaches, different options have been analyzed. Um, simultaneously, a group of employers um, has been also, let's say, flirting with the, with the idea of establishing something on a pan-European level, so let's say to establish a pan-European pension fund based on the IRP1 directive. And this definitely grabs the attention of the Commission because it, it, it offered many it offered answers to the many issues we were observing. For example, the vesting period, the administrative burden of things, uh, the retirement outcome at, reti at retirement age, uh, the transferability of the assets. And so following the development of this group of employers, which, which later was called the Resaver Task Force, and eventually ended to be the Resaver uh, Consortium, which still uh, exists and, and plays an important role in this project as well, the Commission started supporting uh, this project uh, in order to first to create a pan-European occupational pension fund dedicated to research performing organizations, and secondly, to also facilitate its rollout across the European economic area. I hope that was clear, Andrea, uh, from my side. Oh, I wanted to uh, ask something to you about uh, this project uh, because it's very interesting and it's very well supported by uh, Union, by the European Commission uh, since the beginning. Uh, why the European Commission is so, uh, and specifically the, the, the Directorate of the General for Research is involved in receiver. And uh, what are uh, the different perspectives that that commission has on receiver? Okay, so it really started basically, like, like what, I shared, what, I, what I said, it started with the issues related to the mobility. Um, with the time, um, as we also became more familiar with the subject, um, we also saw seeing that actually to receive different other topics can be, can, can be handled. And uh, also in the meantime, uh, let's say, other issues 
um, have been observed that, that we would like to um, find answers for. So one hand, you have the mobility of researchers. We also see that ReSaver or solutions like ReSaver facil uh, facilitate international cooperation between organizations. But another topic that really, uh, where we really see the potential of ReSaver is in, uh, in the area of brain circulation. Now, this is not something that's always been uh, brought in connection with, with, the, with the pension fund, but what we are seeing inside the EU is that there are certain uh, hotspots of, hotspots of research innovation um, where a lot of researchers are going to work to, right? This does result in, 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 in an extent in um, the brain gain of these RNI hotspots in the EU, and unfortunately, it also results in brain drain in the sending regions. This is, of course, not uh, this is of course not, not a, a, an ideal evolution, uh, as we would like to have um, a balanced growth inside uh, in, in the entire European Union. Um, and so that this is where the concept of brain circulation is gaining more, more traction, especially the Croatian presidency has uh, brought brain circulation um, high on the agenda. And also here, the, the transferability of assets plays a very important role. Um, imagine you are working in, in, in country A and you go to work in country B for, for a short time. This country B might be extremely developed when it comes to research innovation. Um, and this person works in this country B for, for a time and goes back to the home country. What a good thing about this is that they will learn a lot of things and they will bring it back to their home country. They will also bring part of the salary part, uh, that back that they have received on their bank accounts. Nevertheless, what is going to stay till their retirement age in the country they have worked are the assets. Um, so why shouldn't these assets come back as well? In most cases, these assets can be transferred back to, to the home country of the researcher, but then you do have an administrative burden, you have a lot, uh, often hidden fees uh, that are there. Um, the individual might not always think about this, might not be always be aware that this is possible, nor what the disadvantages or advantages uh, or advantages are. So we really see that when we have the, the, the mobility of people, uh, mobility of capital, uh, that the mobility of pension assets should definitely also be facilitated. Another important thing, and I will just start by saying uh, a very brief statement, which is if you look at the EU28, there are more than 200,000 pension funds currently operational in, in the 28 country, more than 200,000 uh, pension funds. And all of these pension funds have to be properly managed. Uh, they have to invest their assets. Uh, they have to do the right communication towards their beneficiaries. Uh, well, imagine that 200,000 uh, 200, um, times. As over the often as a result of the of, of the of, of one, or, one or another financial crisis, we also know that the complexity of managing a pension fund is uh, it's increasing. Um, even though there are some efforts to some efforts to to simplify certain rules, um, there are also often additional roles that are assigned. Okay, they might, you might you might have heard about the, the GDRP. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Uh, but for example, also in the in the pensions landscape, we're also talking about, uh, for example, uh, especially when it comes to IRP2, um, an additional role which is called the risk manager that wasn't before. So what we are seeing is the management. If you want to really have a, a proper management of this pension fund, this is becoming increasingly, increasingly complex, which won't make it re easy, especially for smaller pension funds, to um, to really comply with, with all the legislative um, developments. Um, so what we also see on term, probably there's going to be a consolidation of the pension funds. We'll probably evolve towards less pension funds that are bigger in terms of assets, and the fact that they are managing more assets most likely will give them the, the right resources to, um, to, govern, to govern and manage the, the pension fund. But when you work on, on a pan-European level, this definitely facilitates this. Uh, and it's also what we actually saw from ReSaver when ReSaver was uh, being developed uh, and ReSaver is working with different service providers. 
through the public procurement reserve has done, they were able to attract one company, let's say a really good company, country A, another in a country B, another in country C. And this really takes a lot to really stay able to work with companies that are very good, but also that, 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 that offered um, very interesting uh, uh, tenders for, for the resaver organization. So what we are really seeing is that uh, work on the Spain European level definitely will uh, facilitate the, uh, the, let's say, the upscaling of certain pension funds and, and should also facilitate the good governance um, of it. So we also have this pension fund management perspective. Then, um, one perspective that is increasingly getting, getting um, traction is what I call the strategic investment perspective. When you have a pension fund that is dedicated to a certain, to a certain type of organization, uh, in this case, research performing organizations, well, then you can also customize many things of how this pension fund works really to the needs of these type of organizations. It's not always the case if you have a generalistic solution, uh, which is cross-sector and, and which often uh, which often unites, uh, for example, organizations with, co with, with entirely conflicting um, missions. When you have a pension fund only for research performing organizations, for example, you can fine-tune the investment, uh, the investment strategy. Um, the question, and actually the comment we have, all, we have always asked ourselves is that why are European research organizations through their pension funds investing in their, in their overseas competitors while this is not happening in, in the other direction? So this is also the type of thinking that we, that, that we are getting uh, and we are thinking how can we really support research organizations uh, and their employees to have more ethical investments, more green investments, for example, since uh, and this, this has been a request from the Commission for the Resaver, and, and this has been answered that for since, since early this year, uh, Resaver is also offering ESG solutions uh, to all its um, uh, to all its beneficiaries. So this is this is a good this is, this is one step in the good direction. But I think also in the future we have to see how can we customize investment options to the needs of research researchers and to the needs of research performing organizations. This will mean additional options. The idea, of course, is not to, to limit them. Uh, I think they have to be uh, the, um, the, organization, the, the researchers, because at the end they're making the investment decisions. They uh, must be well informed about it, uh, but they definitely also have to have the different uh, possibilities to choose from. So I think these are the different perspectives we are, uh, we are having on, on Resaver, which is not anymore just limited to tackling barriers uh, to mobility or tackling issues caused by mobility. Okay, thank you. Again, uh, Slaven. Now we are speaking about uh, in, uh, Receiver in this project and in, uh, in their characteristic. Uh, the slide, per favor. Oh. Uh, Receiver stands for Retirement Saving Vehicle for a European Research Institution. It is a, a single European pension arrangement open to all organizations that employ researchers within European economic area and take care because its economic area is different from research area because in research area there is some countries that are not in uh, economic area like Switzerland. That includes a tailor-made cross-border IRP, that is, means Institution for Occupational Retirement Provision, run directly by a research institution themselves, managing a second pillar of occupational pension plan. Receiver is the first multi-employer and the multi-country pension arrangement. For this reason, Receiver is a very pioneering initiative that could eventually ensure adequate safe and sustainable pension for mobile employees working in the European research sector and this contributes to an open labor market for researchers. In this slide, we can see the global structure of the receiver and the path that led it in operation. The interested organizations have created the receiver consortium, drawing the guideline for this action. 
In turn, the consortium, with the help of consultant and law firms, has drawn up the guideline for activity of the pension fund, the IRP. The IRP communicates with the members' employees receiving contribution and keeping them informed and, in due course, providing the benefits. The action of the IRP is supported by service provider and control bodies. We must remember, the, uh, Slaven has spoken about it, the great support given by the European Commission, which supported the, ent the entire preparatory phase and finances the receiver startup. In this slide, we can see the receiver structure with respect to the different national realities. For each member country, as we will see better later, there is a national section that adapts to the social regulation and the individual country, of the individual country. And now participants from each country send a contribution to fund based in Belgium. Based in Belgium because Belgium has the best uh, law about the, the taxation on this kind of fund and the more open mind uh, controlling institution, public controlling institution. The consortium is an international not for, for profit organization established again under Belgian law on 1st October of 2014. The consortium purpose is to promote the establishment of a receiver pension fund for the benefit of professional employed by research organization within European economic area. Design the common features of a receiver and the pension plans that are to be managed. And represent the sponsory organization employers engaging in the selection process of the of the, for the service providers. In other words, is the it's the owner of the pension fund. Pension fund, uh, the receiver pension fund manages an occupational uh, pension arrangement for the benefit of researchers and other professional employed by the organization in the Euro European economic area. Pe uh, receiver pension fund is a pan European occupational uh, plan defining cont contribution pension arrangement. It acts as a founded employer sponsored retirement benefit plan as defined as a uh, European directive about IRP to facilitate the cross border activity of retirement benefit plans. In this slide, we can see the structure of the fund with the member organization that, through the General Assembly, give directive to the board and evaluate its work. The board is an executive body appointed by the General Assembly and which use an appropriate committees, appropriate committees for the daily activities. Uh, we can see here the constellation of receiver stakeholders. There is the regulator, the Belgian control authority, uh, and all external activity uh, the actor, the, the controller, the re, uh, insurance, all chosen by European tenders that they guarantee receiver maximum, uh, receiver's maximum efficiency, safety, and profitability, profitability of investment. At the local level, each individual pension plan complies fully with its own country social and labor law. And joining a receiver pension fund rather than a local pension plan will not increase organization tax or contribution or benefits. For whom is a receiver? A receiver for employer side is for public and private organization, university, research institution, and private companies engaged in research activities. From employee's side is for persons who want to contribute to their pension, occupational pension, naturally. We must precise that receiver is not only for mobile staff and not only for researchers, 
but for all employees of institutions that join. This is very important because it's open to all the, 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 the people working in the organization. And that individual can join directly received, but can uh, join directly received, but only through their employers. A single employee can uh, join a receiver if his uh, company is not uh, engaging receiver. Uh, why organization have to join a receiver? Because a res receiver solves the problem connected to the supplementary passion for mobile people. So helps organization to attract and retain the best research in Europe with a state-of-art pension arrangement that benefit employees. Another advantage of receiver is a reduction of organization cost thanks to greater, greater efficiencies and economies of scale. Why the employees have to join a receiver? The advantages for employees are evident. Continuity of accumulation of pension benefit when professional move between organization and country. Access to best-in-class investments, administration, communication, and modeling tools. And is at least as tax efficient as a local employer-sponsored pension plan. Uh, this is very important about the contribution. Receiver is a defined contribution plan. It means uh, that there is a, a sure level of contribution, but not a guarantee of return. Maybe that some form of investment might be guarantee where this is required. For example, in Italy, there is a guarantee uh, return of TFR, the Trattamento di Fine Rapport. The final contribution plan avoids the need for cross subsidies between different organizations. Employers and potentially in the, 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 in their employees pay contribution into individual member accounts. The level of a contribution is mandatory for employer, but voluntary for employees. It means that the employees may contribute according to this economic situation on its willing, with a percentage a higher than the fixed minimum. The, these contributions are invested to help build up, to build up the value of individual member accounts. Individual members are able to choose different, uh, how their account is invested in different level of risk from in different uh, investment uh, options that are available. Different countries may have different contribution levels uh, according with the general situation of different countries and different organizations may have in the same country different contribu contribution levels uh, always according with the, their situation or the or, uh, general uh, agreement with the trade unions and so on. Uh, from the member's uh, perspective, the, uh, from the taxation point of view, the choice, the choice between a pan-European pension plan or a different uh, series of local plans is tax neutral. No, don't change uh, uh, this. Thing. Contributions are taxed in the country they are paid into the fund, in this case, Belgium. It means that instead Belgium don't tax the, uh, the contribution and the, uh, the revenue connected with the contribution only the pension. This is different from Italy, for instance. In accordance with the regulation applicable to the host country where the employee earns the contribution. When the benefits are paid, they will, in general, be taxed as income in country in which the member is a tax resident. It means that the patient will be taxed for an Italian resident in Italy or in Belgium for a Belgian resident. Double taxation agreements exist between most countries of European economic area, so the benefit will be taxed 
once, only in, uh, I repeat, in the, in the country where the uh, beneficiary is uh, resided. Uh, okay. uh, the pension rule, the, the, uh, the rule that uh, uh, govern uh, the, the pension, uh, we, we can find a common uh, overall structure for all, uh, all the, the countries in Europe, which has uh, the ability to beat all required and then make uh, those parts available to mandatory on a country specific, specific basis to comply with, uh, with the, the social and the labor law requirements. It means a different level of rules, one general, another one uh, connected to the single country situation. Uh, together with the common rules, a different country section, as I said, ensure compliance with the different specific social and labor law requirements of various European states. Each country will have a common benefit design to facilitate cost-effective administration. However, even within the common country design, there, are, there can be some variability, such as the contribution level, as far as this variability is supported automatically by uh, administration system. Uh, what's happened when uh, an individual member retires? The value of their account is used to provide a retirement income. As we said, within a civil pension fund, there is multiple country section. It means that depending on the country, benefits must be taken as a, a cash lump sum, a pension, uh, or uh, the, uh, the member will have a choice between the, the two systems. These differences are reflected in the pension fund rules and each country section uh, where necessary through the aim to have a much consistency as possible. Uh, who are the member of uh, uh, receiver? I remember the member of receiver are an institution, not single, single researchers. The associated member is an institution uh, or an employer interested in the receiver and is uh, the, the developments, but currently unable or unwilling to join the receiver pension fund that might become an, asso an associate member by joining a receiver consortium. Associate members have not voting rights, but can participate in the meeting of the General Assembly. Instead, the full member is an institution or an employer that has joined the receiver pension fund and actively participated to its initiative. A full member has voting right in General Assembly. Uh, each employer may decide which uh, uh, individual or groups within their own the workforce uh, can be offered participation in receiver. It means all staff members, only researcher members, only mobile researchers, provided that the local social and labor law no, does not prohibit this, such a distinction. Research and data professional working for a member organization within a European economic area can participate in receiver. As we said before, they, can, they could include researchers, scientists, engineers, technicians, and administrators. How to join? The first uh, uh, step is joining the, the receiver consortium by submitting the application to the board of director who will transfer the application to the General Assembly. The admission is subject to the approval of the General Assembly. All new members will be invited to attend a one-day information seminar in Brussels. The seminar is organized by the European Commission. At, the, at present, there is no membership, but this may be changed in the future. 
and the membership is for as long as required. It's not a bit. Uh, thanks uh, for, for the attention. Uh, this, uh, if for more information, we can uh, see the website of Receiver or send uh, a mail to Receiver. You can find also my personal email for uh, more information. Thank you for attention. Thank uh, special thanks to RITIS, uh, the, the organization that helped me in preparation, and uh, Bea, that, uh, the consultant uh, of AON that helps me correct it by slide. Thank you to all. And now we can quickly uh, pass the, the, the speech to Giuseppe Montalbano that poses the, 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 the position of young researchers in, on this problem. Thanks, uh, uh, Giuseppe. As a Eurodoc representative, thank you for the uh, previous intervention. I found it really interesting, I think, uh, exhaustive of the main challenges and issues uh, early stage researchers face in international mobility, so I'll try to be very brief. I would like just to point out some issues uh, which could be useful for next uh, open discussion. Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to stress this kind of, I would say, paradox in which uh, early stage researchers and even senior researchers in Europe are somehow uh, in which they are somehow entangled because, uh, as uh, already said, uh, European researchers are uh, incentivized, somehow are required to spend uh, periods abroad to make these international -like experiences uh, within the context of the European research area. And most of the European grants, like the ERC or the Marie Sklodowska Curie actions, uh, require this kind of uh, international mobility. At the same time, this kind of mobility. Uh, threatened to disadvantage uh, the same uh, European researchers in respect to the colleagues we uh, on the country on the country remain uh, in their home countries uh, because because as already said uh, the, the social security systems are uh, divided across national lines each member state has its own rules its own uh, social security system. And of course, there is uh, there has been an attempt, there have been directed, and there is an attempt to harmonize them. But of course, there is not a full ar harmonization. And so, as already uh, explained by uh, uh, Dr. Mislincevic, sorry for the pronunciation, <laughs> Dr. Benigni, uh, the uh, early stage researchers are particularly disadvantaged, disadvantaged by these issues. And of course, mobility as clear benefits for research careers uh, is increasingly important as a driver for innovation, like a drive for having a, a, a academic career in an increasingly competitive world. But uh, as I said, uh, there are some, uh, there are different uh, challenges in that. Um, uh, for example, uh, I would like to uh, stress uh, there has been this survey conducted by Science Europe in 2016, uh, which uh, reveals that uh, of uh, 104 funded schemes for postdoctoral postdoctoral researches in Europe, just two um, out of 15 funding schemes promote international that promote international mobility actually offers some form of pension coverage. So there's a problem of, uh, I would say, um, agreements among the member states and social security system, even when some uh, specific member state uh, promote this kind of uh, postdoctoral grant opportunities which promote international mobility across nation. Uh, so there is a kind of uh, problem which is overlooked uh, even when member states and governments and mis ministries of education want to promote bilateral multilateral agreements regarding postdoctoral funding. Uh, is a, a kind of lack of attention related to the uh, social security issues uh, which the uh, researchers have to fund, uh, to face, 
uh, which is of course our main con concern for uh, our association as a federation representative of uh, PhD and early stage uh, researchers. I would like to stress that already in 2005, the European Charter uh, for Researchers uh, stressed this point. Uh, the, it, it pays some attention uh, in the portability of pension rights for researchers moving within public and uh, private sector across Europe. So there are um, kind of problems with uh, being already raised uh, years and years ago, uh, but still we have to uh, we have to we have to face it, and we have not so much uh, solution and um, for, for for this. And even at the European level, and and then I'll go more on the reserve. I like to stress this point because uh, even within some of European grants and funding programs, like I as I quote before the uh, Maris Klodowska Curie or the ERC grants, uh, even this, in these grants there are no, uh, we'll say, provisions to ensure the portability of pension rights and ensuring the researcher will benefit from pension entitlements resulting from his or her work in those countries. Uh, for example, just in, uh, in the ERC um, multi-beneficiary grant agreement, uh, this document only stipulates that the principal investigator has, uh, must be uh, ensured to have adequate insurance under the general social security scheme, such as pension rights. I quote directly from the last version of the multi-beneficiary grant agreement of the ERC uh, issued in 2017. So uh, some provisions have been taken to, to, to to cope with this, to deal with this problem, but uh, paradoxi paradoxically, uh, like in the case of the ERC uh, grant agreement, only uh, focusing on the principal investigators and so not on the rest of the research team. So there are some steps in this in these directions, but first of all, of course, it will be uh, necessary that uh, at least uh, the European grants and funding programs somehow could uh, uh, foresee some kind of provisions uh, which require uh, requiring the beneficiary uh, states to provide this kind of uh, social security agreements to provide the portability of pension schemes. Uh, this, I think, is the first uh, things, the first step step to take. Uh, beyond and next to the other major stay, which, uh, as I said, as it's been said in the uh, previous presentation, is constituted, of course, is represented by the uh, private pension solutions, of course, harmonizing the different uh, member states' social security system is a very uh, huge and challenging task. Uh, we hope uh, uh, we one day we will uh, try to get this closer union even in the, from the point of view of social security rights. But of course, in the meanwhile, the most pragmatic and uh, possible solution is working on uh, this kind of complementary private pension schemes. And of course, the reserve is a major step forward. We welcome and we are uh, proactively dealing and dialoguing with uh, European Commission and Dr. Mislenjevic on this uh, on these issues. Uh, of course, there are some challenges, and then I will stop because I think it will be an interesting topic for the discussion. There are some challenges, uh, more than some even uh, a number of challenges uh, which the reserve pension fund has to face. Uh, first of all, of course, it depends. Its efficacy, of course, depends on the participants' institution, as has been said before. And as far as I you know, uh, there are still uh, not so much participant institution to the reserve consortium. Consortium, uh, considering the more the, if I'm correct, 2000. Than 700 university institutions across Europe. So uh, it's important to find a way to promote, and of course, Eurodoc is one of the main uh, goals we are uh, dealing with, like uh, as, as a European organization, trying to promote, particularly promote the uh, employer's participation to the reserve consortium. But of course, uh, it, it's still, there's still too much work to do um, in, this, in, in this sense. Um, of course, uh, it must be stressed that uh, reserver, of course, as, as uh, any kind of private pension plan, uh, could be subject to uh, risks 
risks related to the capital markets. So, because uh, uh, assets in reserve are invested passively, uh, they are aligned with market performance, and so this could be could, this could constitute a risk, of course, for uh, pension uh, uh, contributions of uh, early stage researchers. But of course, this is uh, it's not a specific problem of reserve, but of any kind of private pension schemes. Um, it's very important what has been said by uh, Dr. Mislencevic, the fact that reserve, the commission is considering now to introduce um, the ESG environmental, social and governance uh, benchmarks into the reserve scheme, because in the past years, I think it was not um, foreseen. And of course, um, even considering the commission efforts for sustainable finance, uh, the most recent initiatives like the taxonomy of on sustainable finance is extremely important to align this kind of uh, pension provisions to the high, higher standards on uh, climate governance, even considering that, of course, the asset manager of Reserver is BlackRock, which is the largest investment company in the world. And so it's particularly important to promote uh, this kind of um, environmental and socially sustainable investments, uh, even uh, regarding the Reserver pension fund. And lastly, and then I will, I will close, uh, it's important in our uh, point of view to um, proceed with that dialogue, uh, more stressing the more ambitious of objectives uh, which uh, could regard uh, the, the completion of the European pillar of social rights. Uh, of course, it's important to work on pragmatic and feasible solutions like the reserve and private pension schemes, but the, uh, the, is it, it's even important to uh, stress that some of these problems can be uh, resolved at its roots. And so it's, it's important to um, work, uh, or to continue work on uh, uh, integration and harmonization of social rights in Europe. And even from this point of view, as Europe, we are uh, interested and uh, we are proactively engaged in this discussion. Um, we, which we, we, we hope we could make some step forward in the, in the next in the next few years. And I, I stop it now. Thank you a lot, Giuseppe, for your speech. Very interesting point of view of your young researchers. Uh, I have a question for you. How does the international mobility impact on the pension uh, entitlements for early stage researchers? Uh, yes, of course, as I as said before, as my uh, as, uh, the previous intervention stressed, uh, in, a, in my opinion, ex an exhaustive way, uh, way, the point is that uh, being so many so national uh, social security systems, uh, of course, each uh, researcher has to pay to follow the, to follow the rule of each uh, uh, host countries. And of course, being based on seniority, with, of course, the contributions be based on seniority. Uh, the researcher will remain in their home country and spend all uh, the, their careers at their home countries. In the end, they will benefit from uh, from uh, more pension contributions for higher pension entitlements that uh, those who has to collect and try to, uh, yes, uh, take the different benefits from, uh, recollect the different benefits from the different uh, pension schemes. So uh, the, the problem is clear. I think it has been uh, stressed in a, in, a, in, a, in a very good way. And, uh, and of course, is a major problem because in the end, uh, it could disincentivize somehow uh, early stage researcher from doing, uh, from be international and mobile, or at least, of course, it could be uh, an issue who uh, disadvantage them uh, in an unjust way, of course. Uh, of course, international mobile researchers benefit from international mobility for their car pers perspectives. And this has been proved is of course, of course, international mobile researchers uh, could benefit from more opportunities in respect to those who remain in their home countries. But at the same time, of course, regarding their uh, social security rights and uh, uh, in the 
and they, the money they, they will uh, benefit from the, their pension schemes, uh, of course, is an, it's an important issue to support it, to create a level playing field for uh, researchers uh, who contribute to uh, innovation and research. Uh, of course, international and mobile researchers are those mostly engaged in these efforts. Thank you a lot. We have a few minutes for questions from... Uh... You are, Laura, you have some uh, questions yes. yes. to pose? Um, thanks, uh, Andrea, for the floor, and uh, to Giuseppe Montalbano for his speech. And I'd like to, to ask a question to, to him, to Giuseppe Montalbano, about the, the, Eurodoc, um, the Eurodoc system. Um, in your opinion, which are the Eurodoc priorities on pension issues for international mobile um, researchers? Uh, yes, thanks for this question. Um, I think, um, as, I, as I said before, our first, uh, our first pragmatic task must be to uh, dialogue and promote together with uh, the G research innovation uh, the receiver scheme, because in this moment is the best and most viable solution we have to cope uh, uh, with the issue of uh, portability of pension rights across Europe. Um, and so we are engaged, first of all, um, in, in trying to cooperate, to find common solution, try to understand how we, uh, we can contribute to, uh, first of all, promote uh, the participation of the university and higher education institutions to the receiver consortium. Uh, but at the same time, I would like to stress that, of course, this could not be our uh, only uh, uh, priority or our uh, unique goal, because, uh, as uh, said before, it is important the same right to, at the same time, to promote uh, the social security agreements among member states, in particular in uh, when uh, there are some. Um, uh, bilateral, multilateral, uh, postdoctoral, postdoctoral funding opportunities or grants uh, it should, be, uh, should be made mandatory for these uh, grant schemes to ensure that the researchers, the beneficiary researchers could, uh, could join a kind of portable pension rights. Uh, there should be, in our opinion, some kind of mandatory uh, provision uh, regarding this kind of um, uh, international uh, mobility scheme and postdoctoral scheme. And in the end, of course, as third last, the third main priority is important in this sense to, uh, to work in a, in a more ambitious perspective to the, uh, with the aim to complete or to uh, delve into the construction of the European pillar of social rights, the integration of social security system, or at least their harmonization, which is in the end the, the basic and uh, most uh, ambitious, but even the main uh, radical solution to uh, ensure at the same time the full uh, uh, international mobility of rights together with the mobility of people and capitals. Thank you. Uh... I have a, because I have some minutes again, uh, I have a, a question to Andrea Benigni. Uh, how is the impact of a totalization uh, system on the pension or effective pension for the people that uh, uh, came from a country with a strong uh, pension uh, system like Italy or France? Uh, when they have uh, some periods of working in a country with uh, uh, not so strong uh, uh, pension scheme, uh, I mean, say, Ireland or some uh, countries in East Europe. Because this, I think, is a very imp question with, with a g g big impact on, on, on uh, the pension. Yeah, it's a good question. And uh, it is also a, a frequent question we receive uh, also I by private companies that, company like that often uh, get in touch with us, uh, forwarding uh, case study related to some manager that move uh, from Spain to Italy, for example, uh, under by a localization. Spain, it's a very low uh, social security system, 
towards a very rich Italian social security system. In Italy, possibly, we, we don't know the real level uh, of, of performance of our social security. It, it could become, it could seem, sorry, a joke <laughs> relating to, to the, the public discussion we have today, but in Italy, we have one of the most relevant public system you said correctly, uh, together France, for example. Uh, absolutely, you have a problem. You have a problem because uh, totalization protects uh, uh, your position under, a, uh, we can say, um, quality point of view, because uh, you have recognized the period. So you have worked two years in Spain and then three years in Italy, totalization grant to you five years recognized both by Spain and uh, from Italy. But obviously Italy will pay uh, its quota and Spain uh, its pay, uh, will pay its quota. It means that if you have two different systems with a different performance, you will have different fees at the end. Okay? So uh, it's a reason, uh, another reason that support uh, a strategy that move an international company towards uh, 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 an investment on international pension plan, both if they have GEC or not, because GEC is not a mandatory solution. Absolutely, it's a very, very performant solution, sure, okay? But also, if the company, uh, more company, uh, go towards uh, a main fund, uh, it could be another solution that could support uh, uh, the employee involved. I uh, I've appreciate so much the direct experience uh, re related both to Giuseppe and Lavan. Uh, I don't know punctually, uh, like you, uh, the, the, the situation present inside the research center, but uh, I'm sure that uh, this matter has to become uh, one of the most relevant in your agenda because uh, the performance uh, of the people is also linked uh, not only to their satisfaction but also to their uh, quiet uh, about their mind, about their worrying, about their future. And uh, today, uh, absolutely, we, we, we face daily very difficult situation in, in the business, uh, not only in this dramatic period, uh, relates to the pandemic, but generally speaking, it's a very strong period. And I think that uh, one uh, of the vision, uh, of the main ballot point of the vision that involves company, international company, has to uh, real, uh, really be effective and nearest to their employee, also relating to the welfare. So your question, Andrea, is uh, uh, touches one of the problems, one of the key problems, because of the example of Spain and Italy, but Ireland also is another example. UK only, uh, also if they are out of the community, but uh, it's a country with a social security agreement uh, with Italy coming from European Union. Uh, all these countries have a very, very poor uh, social security system. And uh, it's very important that it's the organization that move people uh, think uh, in their mindset uh, to protect people too, uh, when particularly they move from one rich country to uh, a, a low country related to uh, the position of the social security system. So I think that uh, the leverage you could push is also this, because uh, absolutely you move people uh, relating uh, to the needs you have. And you cannot see if the social security system is good or not in that country where the needs is open, okay, where the job posting is open, because that professional uh, has to be assigned there because that organization needs about that professional and that specific profession. So you have to protect them, you have to, you have to protect him or her, also by an approach that could be in line uh, with the example that uh, your uh, could could purpose, and I think it's a good way you can follow. Absolutely. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, the timetable said that uh, we have 
our time, the time for our workshop is over. Thanks again to our speakers. Uh, but before leaving, uh, however, I would like to dedicate a special tool to Ingenier Ferrante, the man who brought uh, ASOF 2020 to Trieste and who was uh, executive director until a heart attack took him away. He was a great man without uh, whose job we wouldn't be here today. Thanks, uh, Pierpaolo. Thank you all.